Well, the Sydney Moderns exhibition looks at one of the most innovative periods in Australian art history, and this is the art of the interwar decades from around 1915 to the early 1940s. And artists during this time were starting to engage with the visual languages of modernism. So they were looking at works where they shed naturalistic detail and looked instead towards intensified colour and simplified design and elements of abstraction in their work. In practical terms, the installation process is um, generally quite an involved one. Loans are coming in from all over Australia, loans are coming from um, international venues. We organise plans, basically, of how we want the works to look, always reserving the right to tweak those or change those when we get them on the walls. If we get the modern photographers and put them alongside the home magazine covers, yes. there's no question mm -hmm. that you simply can't deal with artworks on paper. You have to get the artworks in the rooms and then you're often very surprised about the way two works might deal with each other. And of course this is the first time that that 200 odd works have been together for us. That's part of the um, pleasure, actually, of installing a large exhibition. The first section is colour and light. We look at actually a whole range of young student artists uh, setting up in ateliers in Sydney and starting to paint around the harbour. These artists all knew about modernist developments in Europe, you know, we weren't isolated. There was a very strong interest globally at the time actually in uh, synchromies between colour and music and our artists investigated those and produced the first abstracts in Australia. Art was going through transformation in Sydney at a time when the city itself was going through massive changes and developments as it became a modern metropolis. The artist um, was looking at the city and these changes and its modernity became a subject of their art. So they were looking at the dynamics of its modern structures and its physical structures as well and the sort of pulses of modern life that underlay it as well. Probably the image which best epitomises this is the artist's responses to the building and construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It became Sydney's ultimate icon of modernity and it also became a sort of national emblem of Australia's movement into the modern age. Artists are also drawn to the commerce that grows up as part of that kind of growth and so artists are very much interested uh, in the post-war years in collaborations that are about industry and commerce. A lot of people, artists included, were somewhat ambivalent, I suppose, about the, the, the rate and the pace of change. Interestingly enough, what you find is encounters um, from artists with the city that are both celebrations of um, the, a fabulous new world, and by the same token, a sense of ambivalence um, amongst quite a lot of artists about um, the kind of strangers that the city makes of us, uh, the alienation of city spaces, uh, the rise of slums, a whole lot of things that come with modernising that aren't necessarily all fabulous and utopian. In that section we look at the construction also of the modern woman because that was a really important aspect of Sydney modern production and a lot of the really major practitioners were women. We look at the way that a really quite marginal genre in Australian art history, the still life, is grabbed and resurfaces as something very important with Sydney modern artists because they use the still life for experimentation that's about the formal aspects of producing art. For a long time there's been a sense that Sydney moderns um, in the first decades of the 20th century just weren't really interested in landscape and that's not the case at all so we've wanted to have a section where we take some work, some fabulous landscapes by Sydney Moderns and show people what the Sydney Moderns were doing in terms of the very, very dominant Australian landscape tradition. It's in the 30s really that Sydney Moderns start to grapple with formal abstraction because there's a very 
clear continuity between the works that are first being produced in 1913 to 18 and the works that are being produced in 1939 to 41. Well, a sense of the excitement of the period, artists really responded to that that sort of underlying dynamic of optimism through the colour of their works, through that sense of rhythm in their works as well. Um, that sort of expression of the new that artists were really tapping into at the time. It's not as though there is one kind of art that equals Sydney modern. If one has to try and define the notion of modernism or modernity, it's going to be in the mix. So the condition of Sydney artistic modernism and modernity is for a long time going to be in the, the sort of breadth and diversity of the kind of work that artists were doing when they encountered the modern. 